Lasers are amazing. They're beautiful and they can be extremely useful. But one thing they're definitely not is toys. Even though a laser pointer like this may look like it. If used incorrectly, laser pointers can be extremely dangerous. The federal government is set to ban the importation of laser pointers. In the past six months, there have been 30 cases of pilots being targeted by the lasers. In 2008, after a spate of laser attacks on planes, the Australian government introduced strict new controls on laser pointers. Any handheld laser powered over one milliwatt was classified as a prohibited weapon. Anyone found with a laser pointer could face up to 14 years in jail. Australia's regulations are now some of the toughest in the world, although new research reveals that dangerous lasers are still widely available in this country. But before we get to that, what is it about lasers that makes them so dangerous? And for that matter, what is a laser? The word laser is an acronym. It stands for Light Amplification by the Stimulated Emission of Radiation. And unlike white light, which contains every colour in the rainbow, laser light is monochromatic. It contains just one wavelength. An ordinary light bulb casts divergent light. It spreads out. A laser beam is collimated. It doesn't diverge. And finally, a laser beam is coherent. Every wave in the beam is in phase with every other wave in the beam. And it's this combination of being monochromatic, collimated and coherent which makes laser light so dangerous. When normal white light shines through the front of your eye, the cornea, it's projected evenly onto the back of your eye, the retina, forming an image. Laser light doesn't do that. Because of its unique properties, a laser beam is focused onto a tiny spot on your retina, like the sun through a magnifying glass. Laser safety expert Trevor Wheatley has been researching the availability of high-powered lasers in Australia. And his study turned up some surprising results. So the laws changed in 2008. So I took the approach of considering myself a reasonable person trying to do the right thing. Who wants to buy a low-cost pointer from the internet? And so I did a Google search. Trevor bought 44 laser pointers from a variety of eBay sellers, both local and international, all purporting to be within the Australian legal standard. When they arrived, I unpackaged them and measured the power, compared what they were advertised as to what they actually were, for the most part, any correlation between what the laser was actually doing and what the label said was purely coincidental. The power ratings differed wildly and were overwhelmingly higher than expected. Only two of them were under the legal power limit and only one was both legal and correctly labelled. Trevor's conclusion? Many online sellers were misrepresenting the power of their lasers simply to sell them in Australia. The highest power was 110 milliwatts, which is 110 times the iSafe limit for an accidental exposure. And that's really quite scary in the wrong hands. To show how real the risk of an eye injury is when dealing with lasers that are more powerful than the legal limits, I've set up a simple test. So, Trevor, this is a demonstration I do at schools to show kids just how dangerous these lasers are. And I've got this little laser which I bought here in Australia from a stationary supplier. It's got this label on it. It appears to be correctly classified. It's less than a milliwatt, which is the iSafe limit and the legal limit for laser pointers in Australia. And if we test it, nothing. The correctly labelled one milliwatt laser isn't powerful enough to hurt a balloon. This one, however, I bought online and it doesn't even have a label on it, so you don't even know that it's a laser, really. That's a little bit scary. It is, and so if we put our safety goggles on and I'll arm it up, have a look at this. Just as expected, in less than a second, the laser raises the surface temperature of the rubber balloon to its melting point, over 100 degrees. The exact same effect occurs when a laser shines in your eye. The difference is that your eye is far more delicate and you're not burning rubber, you're burning cells. Here at the Sydney Eye Hospital, 
we can see exactly how laser light affects the most sensitive part of your eye, the macula. So what have we got here? So Ruben, look, this is a, a photograph of a normal macula. So this is the retina, the back of someone's eye, and the macula is this slightly darker area in the middle. So even a, an area of damage the size of a pinhead in here would mean that you would be unable to read with that eye. So show me an eye that's had some laser damage. Yeah, so this is a young boy who was playing with laser pointers with a friend and unfortunately had the laser shone directly into his eye. The laser burned the young boy's macula, leaving him with a permanent eye injury. He'll never read with that eye again. As bad as this injury is, though, it could be worse. In extreme cases, lasers can cause macular holes, where the laser beam actually burns right through the macula. So this is really good evidence that these things just aren't toys, are they? Exactly, and particularly uh, they shouldn't be given to, to children to use unsupervised because it's hard to make sure that they don't shine them in someone's eye. So don't let the beauty of lasers blind you to their danger. If you really need a laser pointer, make sure you buy it from a trustworthy Australian retailer and never give it to your kids. The risk simply isn't worth it.